Today, we would like to wish you all a very happy Feast of St. Dominic, and we will be reading from Father Thomas Ojeka about the great saint, and unfortunately, about where his once magnificent order has gone in recent years. Or we'll be taking this from Father Thomas Ojeka's blog at frtojeka.blogspot.com. We'll be screen sharing, so be sure to check out his blog. Father is is one of my all-time favorite guests and um, has fantastic material um, consistently also on his blog as well as on social media. Be sure to find him anywhere you can, Father Thomas Ojeka. The Brood of Nominal Dominicans. St. Dominic, styled extirpator of heresies, founded his order of friars preachers, styled Dominicans, to be extirpators of heresies like him. What do you call Dominicans who are not extirpators, but promoters of the synthesis of all heresies? Nominal Dominicans, for sure. Quote, his watchmen are all blind. They are all ignorant, dumb dogs not able to bark, seeing vain things, sleeping and loving dreams, unquote, from Isaiah 56.10. Today, August 4th, is the Feast of St. Dominic, whose preaching defended Catholic doctrine against the new heresies. He founded the Order of Friars Preachers. As I need to open the actual document, apologies. <laughs> he founded the Order of Friars Preachers, armed with the shield of truth to teach doctrine and the sword of the word of God to preach it. Sometime last year, an occasion offered itself, and I used it to decry, quote, a tale of nominal Dominican, unquote, who barked not at modernists and promoters of modernism, the synthesis of all heresies, who are truly the internal enemies of the church, but rather at Sedevicantus, who are committed to upholding Catholic orthodoxy and orthopraxis in defending the prerogatives of Blessed Peter and his lawful successors. In the present article, is simply an excerpt from it, as it applies to the brood of nominal Dominicans, which continue to thrive even as we speak within the framework of the modernist imposter church with its hybrid ecumenical pan-religion occupying Catholic buildings. Canis Domini, the Lord's dog. A quick search reveals that dog is mentioned about 42 times in the sacred scriptures, either in the singular or plural, for different reasons. In the context which our choice text quoted at the beginning of this article from the prophet Isaiah is taken, dog is used to represent and describe the watchman of Israel. We dare to say that this text comes in handy in an attempt to bemoan the sad reality, the brood of nominal Dominicans, that is, those who lay claim to being and being called Dominicans, but are not only stuck in the cesspool of the synthesis of all heresies, modernism but also are actively signed up in the agency of the most pernicious of the adversaries of the church, modernists. Having darling sister patience for a companion, the reader is sure to see exactly how apt this choice text is for our purposes. A most common legend says that during a pilgrimage, St. Dominic's mother had a dream of a dog leaping from her womb with a torch in its mouth, and that it seemed to set the earth on fire. This was taken as a sign of a great child she was to bear. Thus, playing on the Latin words Domini Canis, which means the Lord's dog. His parents named him Dominic. Take that for a trivia or a starting point for a best-selling doctorate degree thesis. Howbeit, it is an undisputed fact that in an era when the union of sensuality and heresy found its peculiar show-off in the Albigenses, St. Dominic, in using science as a means of obtaining the glory of God and the salvation of souls, was acclaimed extirpator of heresies. With science as a ready tool in the hands of his disciples, who glory in his name as Dominicans, to their moral body was addressed the call to become the chief support of the sovereign pontiff in uprooting pernicious doctrines, heresies. By a play on words, therefore, a Dominican is the Lord's dog, watchdog, entrusted with the duty to check and extirpate any illegality and irresponsibility in manners concerning the purity of doctrine and rectitude of morals always at the service of the universal shepherd of souls, the Supreme Pontiff. The big question is this, for one who glories in the Dominican name, but is blind to the synthesis of all heresies, ignorant of his being stuck in the cesspool of the synthesis of all heresies and his being actively signed up in the agency of the most pernicious of the adversaries of the church, 
to spread the fruits of the synthesis of all heresies, dumb and not able to bark at the synthesis of all heresies, but seeing vain things, sleeping and loving dreams, barks at Catholics uncompromising with the synthesis of all heresies and the most pernicious adversaries of the church. For such a one, I say, what is the best description, if not a nominal Dominican? That is, a Dominican only in name. I await a better description from anyone charitable enough to make a studied objection. In an age of subjectivism and sentimentality, it is never possible to call a spade a spade without being regarded as being offensive and guilty of hate speech. But you see, our duty to truth obliges us to call a spade a spade. A model Dominican. In 1946, a true son of St. Dominic, one not only a Dominican in name, Father Gary Goulagrange, a true preaching friar, published an article titled, quote, Where is the New Theology Leading Us? Unquote. In Rome's Angelicum, one of the most prestigious theological journals. In this article, he warned that the new theology of the new theological movement is nothing more than a revitalized modernism, the synthesis of all heresies. This is because, just like modernism, the starting point for the new theology is the substitution of a subjective and vital notion of truth for the objective, perverting the eternal concept of truth, thus breaking with Catholic theological tradition. Noteworthy is that this same new theology was subsequently condemned by Pope Pius XII in Humani Generis. True to his being the Lord's watchdog, Father Gary Goulagrange barked at those internal persecutors of the Church of his time, the neo-modernists. Now, it is no secret that by admission of its own adherence, this modernist new theology became the official theology of Vatican II. I have a fairly clear image of my lecturer in modernist dressed as Catholic major seminary, categorically affirming this with an air of pomposity. Yes, it was said that the new theology of the new theological movement became the official theology of the church at Vatican II, and that this was the best thing to have happened to the church in modern times, since this new theology helped the church to abandon her old theology of exclusivity to embrace that of inclusivity. A paradoxical parallel. Now, the Dominican Father Gary Goulagrange, making deductions from objective principles and facts, saw in the new theology a revitalized modernism in thought and action. For doing this, he is rightly hailed as a true son of Holy Mother Church, the ground of truth. Sede Vicantis appealing to objective principles of Catholic dogmatic and sacramental theology on the one hand, and to objective facts on the other hand, affirm that Vatican II, having for its official theology the prescribed new theology, and for its spirit, modernism, it is not only not Catholic, but anti-Catholic and that the substantial doctrinal and sacramental changes born of this non nay anti-Catholic source cannot come from the church whose infallible guide is the spirit of truth. For saying this, a Dominican of this age ranks them among the internal persecutors of the church. Why such a paradox? Well, we must find the root in the disparity between the paradigm of Father Gary Goulagrange and that of his supposed confrere of today. The former, a champion of objectivity of truth, used science, the knowledge of things from their causes, while the later, schooled and immersed in modernist subject, subjectivism, subjectivism, sorry, uses sentiment, sentimentalism. There is no iota of a hermeneutics of continuity. No, such is the tale of a nominal Dominican. One with an informed Catholic sense cannot but lament. How are the valiant fallen in battle? How are the valiant fallen and the weapons of war perished? 2 Samuel. Summing up, thus far our excerpts, the moral deafness and dumbness which is characterized of the present-day brood of nominal Dominicans is most pathetic. Unless the good Lord, who alone can heal such maladies, be pleased to show them mercy, what hope is there for their cure? It is very likely that many among them have rendered themselves unworthy of the divine aid through crass and affected ignorance, sheer indifference, human respect, etc. But trusting in the abundance of God's mercy, Catholic charity urges us to continue to beseech our Lord to heal them of their moral deafness and dumbness. Kyrie eleison.
And once more, St. Dominic, one of the great hammers of heretics, pray for us, pray for all heretics and apostates, those who hold our churches, those who lead so many astray. Please pray for, for all of them, everyone who's, who's been led off the path of truth. Help us in these times where we so desperately need you.